Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about some crazy colors and when to use, you know, colors that just do not match the hatch. But first I wanted to make an announcement. Uh, I started just recently working with fishthemoment.com. Um, Fish the Moment, if you haven't been to their YouTube channel, phenomenal YouTube channel. They've got some of the best content out there to teach you how to catch more fish. And they've also got a great resource online with fishthemoment.com. And one thing that we're going to be doing pretty special with the Fish the Moment team is we're going to be doing these, these virtual lessons. So you can book myself or Matt Steffen, um, uh, Randy Blockett, uh, Jimmy Easterling, all those anglers you're going to be able to book for one hour sessions where you can ask any questions you want to know. And uh, each of us have our own little uh, specialties so you can pick based on that or whoever your favorite fisherman actually is. So check out the virtual lessons that are available at fishermoment.com. Also check out some of the things like the playbooks and all the different um, seminars and webinars that, that um, Johnny Schultz, the creator of Fish the Moment, has on that website. It's an awesome, awesome resource. But anyways, let's dive into uh, using crazy colors um, because most of us, you know, especially, uh, at least I'm speaking for myself, we all try to match the hatch. That's the number one thing that we try try to accomplish when we get on the water when we're trying to decide what color to use uh, with whatever bait. And as a general rule, that's what I want to do is I want to match, if I'm using a bottom bouncing technique, I want to kind of match it to the bottom color. You know, if it's sand, it's more of a pumpkin color. If it's, uh, you know, kind of muddy, silty, maybe green pumpkin or, or, you know, if it's around grass, watermelon red, something like that. You're trying to match that bottom bouncing technique with the surrounding environment, which is exactly exactly what the forage down there is trying to do. It's trying to camouflage itself. Same thing goes for baits like crankbaits and spinnerbaits that are in the water column. You kind of want to match it to the, the shade, the hue of that water in general. Um, but there are a lot of situations where you want to use gaudy, uh, bright, flamboyant colors, crazy colors. And uh, there's a variety of different situations that, that um, kind of dictate when to use these, but I want to just run through a couple of them. The first one is one that I really over the years had to gain a lot of confidence in, and in recent years I have started to gain that confidence. The first one is Fire craw, red, you know, let's, let's zoom in there. Let's look at this beautiful thing right here. Oh my goodness. Look at that beautiful fire craw. This is all the rage right now. So uh, down south, what happens is a lot of these, these lakes, especially lakes that have a lot of grass in it, is early spring, you get um, the crawfish that start turning red. And generally, I think that those crawfish uh, that are feeding on grass are the ones that turn that bright, bright red. And so that's why early spring, you know, that, that January, February, March uh, time period, uh, late winter, early spring, spring, that's when fire craw red is, is really, really um, uh, productive. It took me a long time to get, get really confident in a fire craw, but man, it, when this color is on, this is the color that you want to throw. Uh, it may look crazy in the water, it may look totally unnatural, but for those fish, it really triggers something um, deep down, some primal uh, you know, trigger uh, in their little pea brains that uh, that, that really makes them react to this very viciously. So uh, fire craw is, is definitely a crazy color that you wanna throw in the spring, especially down in the south. Not so much up north, but down south, February, January through March, that's a really, really good bait uh, color to throw. Another uh, really flamboyant, crazy color that's um, not, in really this is actually a handful of different colors. Um, it, it, again, primarily down south, uh, but more so closer to the spawn, just right at the end of the pre-spawn, during the spawn, and right at the beginning of the post-spawn, something like methylate. Methylate right here, let's look at this beauty too. 
this is a color that, that kind of gets forgotten because it generally doesn't work that well uh, throughout the year, except for this one narrow window of opportunity during around that spawn where the fish just go crazy for it. The same goes for like bubble gum and just uh, pure white, you know, fishing a floating worm like this around flooded uh, vegetation, flooded bushes, um, just around shallow cover where those fish are about to spawn or, or are spawning. Again, uh, triggers something in them that just makes them angry at this color. All right, so during the spring, you know, methylate, whites, uh, uh, bubble gum, you know, those are all really good. But it, it, one word of caution with, when it comes to like a floating worm and those three colors is when it is on, hold on, it's going to be crazy. When that bite is, is on fire, it really truly is a blast. But if it's not working, you're gonna find out really quick. It, 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 it seems that they're either on this bite and they're really aggressive towards these colors in the floating worm setup, or they're not aggressive towards it at all. You're not gonna get any bites. So um, if you're going out there and you, you fish it for uh, several hours without a bite, it's probably not happening. But always have it tied on during that spawn time period because you never know when that window of opportunity opens up for that bait. All right, so another situation that, that I found over the years, um, especially fishing up north, is again, um, you know, I always tend to try to match the hatch with, with uh, you know, uh, the baits that I'm using. I always want to, to make sure, especially in clear water, that the that I'm fishing baits that look exactly like what the fish are feeding on. And up north, uh, a, a great example would be Lake Champlain. Years ago, I was fishing a chatterbait in some, some largemouth water. The water was clear, but tannic stained. And I was fishing a chatterbait that was kind of a bluegill color. It also looked like a, uh, I tried to make it look like a yellow perch quite a bit and it was catching fish it was catching fish um, quite a bit you know it was it, the bite was pretty good in the morning uh, this was the first day of the tournament uh, that I was fishing and I ended up catching probably about 30 fish but I didn't quite have the weight that I wanted and the bite completely shut off on that bluegill color and I, I was just about to leave I was just about to turn over the the big engine and take off and go for some smallmouth but I decided to stick around and just try a completely different color and what I ended up switching to was a white and chartreuse uh, chatterbait obviously this is in the chatterbait this is the z-man goat but I was using something bright white like this uh, and and that ended up just absolutely turning that bite back on. I mean, I was I was catching them left and right. I would even try the bluegill color again and I wouldn't catch them. For some reason, they had got tired of seeing that bluegill color and even though they're not feeding on anything in that shallow water that had this coloration at all. There was no shad, there was no alewife, there was nothing that looked white in that area. It was something completely different and they were super aggressive towards it. And so uh, another situation that I found again up north is fishing like the Mississippi River or the, the river systems, you know, that have smallmouth in them. You know, again, fishing bluegill colors, um, black and blue, things like that, they may work, but fishing a white and chartreuse chatterbait or swim jig or something like that really, really quickly, even though it doesn't look like anything that they're really feeding on, just for some reason that white and chartreuse or just plain white or pearl coloration really triggers some strikes. So, um you know, this just goes to show you that if you're fishing a bait and you, you, you're getting some bites, but you don't feel like you're maximizing on the amount of fish that live there, try something completely outside the box to see if you can get a few extra strikes. And another note that I, I will make is that, you know, in situations where you've got a ton of bait fish, especially when, when the shad are super active and you've just got this, maybe you've got this creek that is just loaded with shad, okay? If you've got billions of shad in a creek, 
it's very unlikely that that your bait, your presentation is gonna be the, the thing that triggers those fish to strike. They're so used to seeing the, the, the real thing that it becomes very, very difficult to catch fish in those type of situations when there's a huge, you know, a, a, a huge amount of, of bait fish for them to choose from. So one of the things that I've learned to combat this is to do something completely different. Maybe throw black and blue or throw something, you know, a uh, real bright colored, uh, something that is completely the opposite of what those fish are, are feeding on. Sometimes that might mean switching from a shad imitation to a crawfish imitation, you know, because maybe those fish want a little bit of variety. That's one of the, the ways that I've been able to combat those, those overfed fish in uh, these areas that, that have a bunch of bait to choose from. But anyways, guys, the key here is that sometimes fish aren't just feeding based on what, uh, what the bait fish look like or what the forage looks like, but sometimes they're going to strike based on their just primal instincts and just flipping that switch and making the aggression come out. So um, sometimes these, these really crazy colors are gonna allow you to get some extra very vicious strikes. So anyways, guys, get creative out there. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm going to see you out on the water.